Hi folks, welcome back to my channel. Well, I was uh, really excited this week because I finally worked out how I can video my computer screen. And the reason I've been trying to find out how to do that was a few people have asked how I actually process my astro photos. So um, this little discovery has meant that I can show you how I produce the images that I come out from, the sort of workflow, if you like. Uh, now I'd be the first to admit, and I say this several, many times that I'm not out here to produce uh, award-winning photographs. Uh, I'm doing my astrophotography really to um, create images that please me at the end of the day. So my techniques aren't particularly sophisticated, um, which makes them very suitable to people who are just starting out in astrophotography. Um, I use two programs. One's a free stacking program called Sequitor and I use Photoshop for my main uh, processing of contrast, brightness, all that sort of thing. Uh, we'll go through all of that step by step in this video. Um, I've got the computer skills of a nine-year-old so today we're going to see how I take a single image here where the target is only just visible, in this case it's a galaxy in the centre of the screen, to this final image here um, without using any sophisticated techniques at all. My name's John and I make videos on camping, astronomy and walking. If you like what you see in this video then please check my channel out as there may be others that interest you there. But in the meantime, let's crack on with today's video. Back to the original image then, I took 57 individual 60 second exposures with the intention of stacking them together to create an image with a total integrated exposure time of around an hour. I guess the first questions to ask then are what is stacking and why do we do it? Um, well stacking basically is simply layering all of your photographs one on top of the other and this is achieved via a computer software and what it basically does is it uh, averages out the noise that's within your photograph whilst leaving the signal, which is the part you do want, the light coming from the galaxy or whatever, unchanged. So in doing this it improves the signal to noise ratio of your image. Now there's multiple software that can be used to achieve this. Um, I use primarily Sequitor, mostly because it's very, very simple to use, and that's the one we're going to look at in this video here. Uh, we've also got a Deep Sky Stacker, which is another free stacking program. That's somewhat more complex though, but um, has many more features involved in it. I actually have used both. Um, I tend to prefer Sequitor partly because it's simple, and partly because it requires much less uh, computer capacity to do it, so the stacking process is very, very fast. This is what the screen of Sequitor first looks like when you open it up, and the area that we're interested in is the top left-hand corner, which is where we load our images in to start the process off. Looking in detail at the top left corner then, the star images are the photographs you've actually taken. The base image is a sort of reference frame that's essentially pre-selected by the software. The noise image is what are called in astrophotography terms dark images and these are taken to reduce noise in the final image, it gets rid of hot pixels and that sort of thing. Vignetting images are uh, what are called in astrophotography terms flat frames and these are there to reduce vignetting as the name suggests and also can be used to get rid of things like dust marks on your sensor. I'm fundamentally lazy and I always forget to take noise images and vignetting images so um, neither of those are present in this tutorial here. The output is simply where we assign a file name and location 
for the uh, final stacked image that uh, Sequitor will produce. So in that top left corner then, I'm only generally clicking on star images to load up the files off my camera and output to allocate a file name for the resultant stacked image. So I guess at this point what we need to do is to take my 57 60 second exposures and load them into the program and allocate a file name for the image to be generated under. And that's what we'll see now. So here's me starting the process of loading up my files. Um, the galaxy is called the needle galaxy, by the way. Uh, and these are images that I took back in the spring. Um, I'm only going to select the raw files for the purposes of this exercise here. The program will take JPEGs, mind you. Here's the program allocating the um, base frame or the reference frame for the stacking process. And here's me typing in the file name under the output section for the final image that will come out of the sequitur stacking process. Now we'll look at this section of the screen, which is where we put in the parameters around which we want our stacking to take place. The good news here is that I tend to leave all of these settings on the default value, which is off. If an image has a high dynamic range, for example, the Orion Nebula, where you've got a very bright core and faint outer areas, then I may turn the um, high dynamic range selector to on. Equally, if when I've done the stack, my image just looks completely washed out and white, then I'll turn the uh, light pollution selector to on. But generally I don't bother, I just leave everything on default and wait and see what happens. The actual stacking process is very fast, only takes about five minutes to do 50 or 60 frames. So it's perfectly possible to just experiment around with the different settings and see what works best for your image. OK, so now we'll just press the start button and get the whole process rolling. And this is the stacking process underway, sped up by eight times just to get it down to sort of 20 or 30 seconds. OK, Sequitor has now produced our final stacked image. Uh, it's a little bit more washed out than an original frame was uh, straight off the camera. This is fairly normal for Sequitor. And I just tend to uh, correct that while I'm in Photoshop. But if you click the reduce light pollution option um, for the, the stacking options that I showed you earlier, then that typically produces a much darker image. It's just that I prefer to do it in Photoshop. OK, so we've now got an image that has hopefully got less noise in it than the original image whilst maintaining the signal and that's really the purpose of stacking. So now the next step is to put that image, the stacked image, into Photoshop and try and bring out the detail that's buried in there. Now I make no bones that my Photoshop skills are pretty poor uh, so I'm trying to find the least complex ways of doing things and the adjustments that we're going to make are basically uh, levels and curves adjustments, a little bit of uh, saturation, that sort of thing, and some adjustments in the camera raw filter. But in addition to that, there's some quite complex tasks that need to be carried out often on your photographs. And because of my poor Photoshop skills, I tend to use some external plugins or actions to help me do these things in one click rather than going through quite a complex process. One of these things is called a gradient exterminator 
and another is called astronomy tools and when we get to me using those in the uh, processing process I'll discuss those in a little bit more detail so um, let's press on so this is the stacked image opened up in Photoshop and you can just about make out the galaxy located here the first thing we're going to do is a levels adjustment which is accessed by these two menus here and when you open up levels you see this graph the graph's called a histogram and it represents the spread of light across your image the far right hand side of the graph represents pure white and the far left hand side represents pure black and you can see here that all of the light in the image or the signal is concentrated in a very narrow spike about a third of the way in from the left the area to the left of the spike uh, doesn't really contain any data and represents light pollution so our first task is to basically get rid of that area and clear the light pollution out of the image this is achieved by grabbing the little slider that you can see indicated here and moving it across to the right stopping just short of the data spike so we'll go into levels and make that adjustment now and you can see how the sky darkens right down when you do that and that's you eliminating most of the light pollution the galaxy is very small in the frame of view so I'm going to basically do a bit of a crop using the cropping tool to start with um, just to bring out the area of the picture that I'm really interested in Now we're going to do the second type of adjustment which is called a curves adjustment and this is found under the same menu that the levels adjustment was found. Clicking on this brings up a new histogram uh, and you can see that the data spike now is pushed to the far left of the graph. You can see that the data spike is very tall and very thin and our goal is to widen that data spike out a little bit, spreading the data out more. And this is called stretching the histogram. You'll notice that there's a diagonal line running up the graph. And to make an initial stretch, what we do is grab a point halfway up the diagonal line and move it upwards by half a grid square. This has the effect of brightening up the image slightly and spreading out or stretching the histogram. So once we've moved up half a grid square, we click OK to apply. So what we'll do now is actually go through that process of carrying out the curves adjustment and apply it, as you can see here. I would now repeat this process a second time and the reason for doing this is two small adjustments introduces less noise into the image than one bigger adjustment. So here's the second adjustment being made. These two stretches have brought the galaxy out a bit more as you can see but they've also highlighted artifacts in the image and increased the noise. The unwanted artifacts that you can see highlighted here, the little red streaks, are actually hot pixels on the camera sensor. They appear as streaks because of imperfect tracking of the mount. It's worth noting here that if I'd taken dark frames, these artifacts may well have not appeared because dark frames tend to reduce the incidence of hot pixels, but I always forget to take them so I end up having to get rid of them in processing. And the way I get rid of these things is simply using the spot healing brush tool as indicated in this picture here where you simply paint over the blemish to get rid of it. So um, let's crack on and carry out that little procedure now.
we've now got an image which is coming along nicely. The galaxy is beginning to come out, um, but the colour balance isn't quite right yet. The image looks a little bit sort of browny red colour. And this is where gradient exterminator comes in. Gradients in an image are where, for example, the bottom half of the image is brighter than the top half. Or perhaps you're seeing vignetting in the image and other um, sort of unwanted artifacts. And a gradient exterminator with one click of the button will correct these features. And it also corrects the colour balance um, at the same time. The plugin's easily found on uh, Google for download. It costs about $60, I think, at the moment. Um, which is about £45. It is worth noting that the um, functions that Gradient Exterminator performs can be achieved in Photoshop itself without any additional plugins or whatever, um, but they're sort of way outside my skill level uh, if I can just press a button. When installed, Gradient Exterminator will appear under the Filters tab along the top of the screen under the name RC Astro. Clicking on it causes a small box to come up with a number of options. I've found typically that Medium and Medium work well for pretty well everything, but um, you can just experiment because the results are pretty well instant. So let's call it up and run Gradient Exterminator. You can see here that the colour correction has been made. There was no real gradients in my image that were visible to be corrected. So all that's really happened is the colour has been corrected. Things are looking quite nice, so I'm going to go back into the curves adjustments now and make some very fine curve adjustments. And what I want to do is to create a very subtle S shape in the curve, as you can see here. So we'll get on and do that now. Um, the idea really is to pull down very slightly the lower left part of the line which will make the darks a little bit darker and then to pull up slightly the mid-tones which will make them a little bit brighter and having done that once I then will repeat the exercise again for reasons that it introduces less noise than just sticking in a, a bigger S-shaped curve. Okay, so that's done now, and what I want to do now is to go back into levels and make a little bit of an adjustment there. If we look at the histogram, you can see that the uh, signal spike is a little bit thicker. That's a result of the stretching that we've been doing. But there is space now to the left of that spike, uh, which is, basically holds no data. So I want to make a levels adjustment using that far left black slider and move it in closer towards the spike in order to darken the sky as you see here. Things are slowly improving now with the galaxy beginning to come out more and more. The background sky is a little bit blotchy though and those are the sorts of areas that I want to tackle next. And it's now that the second of the plugins comes into use. It's called the Astronomy Tools Action Set and is easily found by Google. Costs about $22, so that's £15 or so, and it contains a multitude of different functions that in one click of the button re replace multiple clicks in Photoshop itself. Once installed, you access it through the Window tab along the top of the screen and click on Actions. 
another menu then opens which gives you access via a single click to something like 30 different functions uh, deep space noise reduction light pollution removal making stars smaller getting rid of blue halos round stars the list is almost endless all achieved with one click so let's dive in and have a go and see what what we get so we'll just open the program up now as i've shown before and have a look down the list. The first one we'll do is light pollution removal just to get rid of the last dregs of light pollution and I basically leave everything at, at default for this and just let the program do its job. So that's this function complete now and we're left with a nice dark sky. The next one we'll do is deep space noise reduction. And now color blotch reduction. And after this I want to do a quick save of the image because it occurred to me that I hadn't done any saving up to now. And I saved them as a TIFF file. We're getting pretty close now to being able to give ourselves a slap on the back. Um, so what I tend to do towards the end of the process is go into the camera raw filter which is found under the filters menu uh, just to do some final tweaks it occurred to me that i haven't said how i took my photos um, they were taken through a 70 millimeter refractor mounted on a eqm 35 mount using a dslr camera The background sky is still a little bit blotchy, so I'm going into the noise reduction section of the camera raw filter in order to get rid of the colour noise and tweak the luminescence to kind of smooth it all out a bit. For your general interest, the um, needle galaxy sits between 30 and 50 million light years away. It's quite a small target, so it's really best suited to a much bigger telescope than mine, perhaps a 8-inch um, or 12-inch telescope rather than the 2-3-inch to three inch one that I use here. But nonetheless, we work with what we've got. And tweaking the black slider just to make the sky a bit darker, but taking care not to push the histogram off the left-hand side. So that's given me this image here, which I'm quite pleased with at the moment. I'm now going to use the lasso tool to select the galaxy and then use the inverse tool, which then calls up everything but the galaxy. So let's do that for real now. and back into camera raw filter and what I'm doing now is reducing the clarity of the image or everything but the galaxy and this will have the effect of making the background stars a little bit dimmer so that they don't uh, drown out the galaxy itself so we'll do another crop and another save now back into astronomy tools plugin now and we'll select the increase star color option and just press that once if you run it twice it tends to generate funny color stars 
Now I'm going to put a lasso tool around the galaxy to leave the galaxy selected and push up the saturation just of the galaxy a little bit and I'll probably do that twice because two smaller moves is better than one large one. Now we'll lasso the galaxy once again to select it and go back into camera raw and now just looking at the galaxy I want to tweak up the clarity and sharpness slightly uh, just to see what sort of a difference it makes at the end of the day. Having done that I'll select inverse so it's everything but the galaxy back into camera raw once again and pull the clarity down slightly in order to reduce the stars a little bit and make another save. Another tweak of contrast and highlights in camera raw followed by a further crop of the image as the galaxy was really small. A final check of the image make sure that I'm happy with it and then a final save and it's job done. Okay so that's that photo fully processed now. I'm quite pleased with it. We'll have a look at it in a minute. Like I've said before it's not perfect but given the galaxy's 50 million light years away uh, it was shot using a small refractor, that one there, which isn't an ideal um, telescope for catching such a small target. It appears very small in the field of view. So the image has been massively cropped, coupled with my uh, pretty poor Photoshop skills. Uh, but nonetheless, as I said, I'm quite pleased with the picture. I hope you like it as well. And it goes to show you that you don't need to be an absolute whiz at Photoshop unless you're trying to win awards with your, your photographs. If you're just trying to please yourself, then the sort of processes that I've gone through here should be good enough to get you off the ground. So I hope those of you who are new to stacking and um, have only got limited knowledge of Photoshop, this has given you a bit of encouragement to show you how you can get started. Thanks very much. Cheerio. Well, I hope you found that video uh, enjoyable. Uh, if you did, it would be great if you could press the like button and maybe make some comments about what you did or didn't like in the comments section below. Uh, if you did enjoy it though, uh, maybe have a look at the other videos on my channel as you may find something of interest to you there. And if so, it would be absolutely fantastic if you could subscribe. That would really help me out. Uh, but in the meantime, I wish you well and cheerio until next time.